There is one kind of story that is part of the folklore of many cultures in human history around the world. The story of the little people. Humanoids that look like humans, only very, very, very small. There are tales of leprechauns in Ireland, dwarves in Germany, nunos in the Philippines, nitawo in Sri Lanka, and so, so many more. No archaeological evidence was ever found to prove their existence. Maybe because they carefully made sure they would never be found. Thousands of years ago, when the giants were spreading everywhere on Earth, the little people realized they were going extinct. So, the great wizard Magico enchanted a rock, made wild vegetation grow on the outside and a beautiful habitat inside. A new home for the little fire creatures, the little water creatures, the little air creatures and the little earth creatures. A safe haven so they could live together in harmony and peace, trading among themselves. The air creatures had little wings and they lived in the high canopy of the jungle, inside the dome of this magical world called Mystique. They processed the branches and made poles, planks, ropes and baskets. They also wove fabric and built balloons that would carry them to platforms at the fire creatures caves where they traded their wares for metal objects like nails, hammers and spades. The fire creatures were strong like rocks with massive hands and feet. They lived in caves inside the mountain of Wahatu. They used small veins of lava in the mountain to forge metal and together with the air creatures they constructed a crane to trade their wares with vegetables and fruit from the earth creatures. The earth creatures lived in hobbit-like houses in the earth at the foothills of the great mountain of Wahatu. They had moss for hair and looked kind of green. They cultivated fields with the aid of giant snail-like creatures and built canals and mills with stone, harnessing the powers of the rivers flowing down the mountain. The water creatures looked kind of fishy. Their skin shone like silver in the sun and they had fins and long feet like flippers. They made nets and they were excellent fishermen. With their own crane and balloon port, they traded their fish for wood, baskets, vegetables and fishing hooks. They all lived peacefully for thousands of years in the paradise world of mystique that the wise magical had created for them. And so it went until one evening when everyone was still working and playing and swimming and swinging and flirting, a great rumble started shaking everything around them. Big 
plumes of smoke started coming out of Wabu, and cracks appeared on the side. Flaming comets started flying in the sky, causing fires wherever they hit. Magico understood in an instant that he had made a mistake he didn't know how to fix. The gift of fire he had deposited in the belly of Wahatuhu was out of control and was about to destroy the whole world of mystique in one monumental volcanic eruption. Having only seconds to act, he cast his most potent spell, a spell given to him by his grandfather, but one he never expected to use. Without hesitation, he petrified the whole of Mystique, turning to stone all the creatures, all the plants, as well as the lava that was about to kill them. All life in Mystique was suspended. The mill stopped turning. The water stopped flowing. The joyful laughter of Ahila on the swing stopped. And Ahalo, who was pushing her, would not get to ask her to marry him as he had been nervously planning. The basket weavers stopped singing and their hands stopped weaving. Uaraga from the water creatures was just about to dive, but her hands would never reach the water. Iatho, who was bathing in the small lake of the earth creatures, kept pointing at all the beautiful red lights that were lighting up the sky as they all turned gray. Magico was devastated. For the first time in his life, he was utterly alone. It was because of him that all these creatures no longer breathed. Unable to figure out a solution, he decided to leave Mystique and search the world to find one. He climbed on Voltro, his loyal vulture, and traveled through time and space. He visited the libraries of Alexandria and the magical libraries inside the bowels of the Vatican in search of a way to save his people. The years were passing and passing, and he was finding nothing. He talked with shamans of the jungle, of Mongolia and the plains of Africa, but no one knew what to do. He consulted with gurus, sages, philosophers, wizards and warlocks and studied the precious scrolls and the hieroglyphs of times past. Decades went by and still Magico did not find anything that could stop a volcano from erupting. He became old and grey and also Vultro was getting more and more ragged and tired. Magico felt that he would not be able to keep flying for much longer. Take me back, Voltro, he said, disheartened. Take me back to Mystique. I am at the end of my powers. Let me die together with my people. They might be stone, but they are all I have. A tear rolled down his cheek as Vultro set course back to Mystique. After many days, they could finally see their home appear in the rolling mountains below them. However, with the enthusiasm of seeing Mystique so close, old Vultro, with his aging eyesight, hit a branch and they both crashed down, half dead. When they hit the ground, 
two huge monsters rush towards them, growling hellishly, baring their teeth and their infernal tongues. Vultro spread his wings over his dying friend and master and readied himself to be torn to pieces. Like thunder, a booming voice reverberated in the skies. Happy, Mocha, fuck off! While the monsters instantly quietened and sat down, two giant hands picked them up and a voice boomed. What do we have here? Looks like you guys need help. The giant carried them to a place of many giants, all shouting excitedly. They gave them water and pieces of fruit. Magico and Voltro were amazed. These giants were actually friendly. Who are you? The giants asked. And Magico, with his knowledge of all tongues, told the story of Mystique, of his travels, and of his despair. Don't you worry, little fella. Show us to Mystique, and we will fill the volcano with water, so that warm, healing thermal springs will fill the rivers and the lakes. Thank you so much, great giants, but it would be useless because I have no power or spell to bring life back into the eroded stone that are my people. All is lost and I will die with this pain. Don't be so glum, little fella. We have magic paint that will bring life to all the stone. We will paint slowly and carefully like sloths and flexible like caterpillars and we will break nothing and hurt nothing and our magic will breathe life into your people and mystique will live again we promise you this magical felt peace and trust enter his heart Vultra will take you there he said he smiled and drew his last breath And so it happened. And now Mystique lives once more with new friends, the nice giants, who visit Mystique to bathe in her hot springs and the beautiful waterfall that now and forever comes out of the crater of Wahatohu. The end. Actually, it is not the end at all. From now on, all good-hearted giants visiting Pueblo, Colorado will be able to visit Mystique and bathe in her therapeutic hot springs and meet all the little people. So take a sneak peek into this magical world.
These are the giants who painted new life into mystique. 